And the U.S. State Department announcing a three-day ceasefire will begin in Sudan after multiple days of violence prompted evacuations of foreign nationals. And it comes as the U.S. Embassy is urging people there to shelter in place. Richard Engel has the latest. The race is on this morning to evacuate foreigners, including more than 16,000 Americans from Sudan, in case the shaky 72-hour ceasefire between two warring generals breaks down. While European nations have taken out hundreds of their nationals and some Americans on cargo planes, the best way out for large numbers is by road. Long drives to Egypt, Ethiopia, or increasingly Port Sudan on the Red Sea coast. While the United States is not running convoys and has no plans for a mass rescue, the administration says it is providing information about routes and watching them from above with drones. Some of the convoys that have tried to move uh, people out, including all the way to Port Sudan, but also to places closer into Khartoum. Some of them have encountered um, problems, um, including uh, robbery, uh, looting, that kind of thing. The United States has also positioned a warship off the Sudanese coast near Port Sudan in case a military evacuation is ordered or to provide medical care. Another ship is on the way. But getting out is not a simple drive. Shortages of gas, food, and price gouging mean people have to improvise. Lakshmi Parthasarathi, an American travel writer who yesterday was stranded in Khartoum, this morning has moved out of the capital for safety. She's keeping a video diary for us. I am sitting here in a school that's been turned into a little refugee camp. Yesterday, I fled Khartoum, hitchhiked south. The city was complete mayhem when I left. There were power cuts, no running water, no access to cash, so I left with only $20. Foreigners are leaving Sudan, or trying to, but many Sudanese worry the fighting will get worse once most are gone and the world's attention, as it has before, turns away. 